This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Jack Threads. Coming up on Destructoid, Dishonored is not just about killing people, it is about killing people creatively. The lovely ladies of Dead or Alive 5 show off their swimwear, and finally there is some news about Bioshock Infinite. All that and more right now on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy Friday, Max! Happy Friday, Tara, how are you? I'm great! I was just gonna say happy Friday to the people watching also. Don't talk to them! Because I always ever say it to you, but never to them. Someone so called me out for, for not asking you how you are when you're always like, how are you, or something like that. Yeah, some, why don't you? Some business. I said because you're always saying happy whatever day of the week it is, and when you say happy Monday, this is a dumb thing to say, because more often than not, Mondays are bad. They're not happy. They're bad. It's just and that's a why Garfield is full of shit. Yeah, Garfield anyway, is full of shit. Anyway, uh, it is Friday, which sometimes means we have a contest for you so you guys can win things at home. Unfortunately, today is not one of those times. We had just this big basket of prizes, but a large bird just swooped down and carried it away. So sure. that's uh, not going to be happening. But on the bright side, we do have an extra news fun packed learning knowledge adventure episode for you. Tara, tell them things. Yes. So before we get into the actual meat of today's show, just a quick note. Uh, yesterday, the internet, by which I mean NeoGAF, ran wild with reports that The Last Guardian, the upcoming game from Team Ico, was canceled. Oh, no. I know. Apparently the trademark for the game's title had expired and that led some people to believe that Sony had given up on the game altogether. But as it turns out, that was nothing more than a mean, dirty, disgusting internet rumor. <sighs> Sony told Game Informer that the project is still in development, so there's no need to panic, guys. The Last Guardian is alive and well. It's probably going to be another year to at least before Sony actually decides to kill it. So why don't we just get on with the real news, huh? That sounds like a fun thing to do, Tara. Now, a few weeks ago, we got treated to a few blurry leaked photos of the Durango, aka the Xbox 720's dev kit, which really doesn't tell us a whole lot, except that it- Is it a car? It, is it a truck? Who you'd knows? think that's more exciting to look at than a regular-ass computer tower that has like a Matrix wallpaper from 2003 on it. That's exciting. And then a guy's a piece of printer paper that a guy wrote on. Um, but yeah, that seemed legit. And that same guy, uh, Twitter user SuperDAE, has leaked some more photo for us. It's just one. This one, it appears to be, is, is a screenshot of what the Kinect 2 will be capable of. <gasps> or the Kinext, if you will. Uh, that would be a terrible name for it. Based on the screenshot, it looks like it's going to be more accurate. Mm. as you kind of would expect, because it would be dumb to make it less accurate. Also harder to make it less accurate than the Kinect. Um, now the gradient effect on the ground you see here is, is more than just cool rainbow lava. It is actually uh, indicating better depth recognition, and if you just look at the outlines of the players on the screen, you can see that it is better at recognizing human forms, as opposed to weird like wireframe skeletons and cloud blobs. Uh, it also is able to get fingers, which the current Kinect seems to have trouble with. Can't wait I, for the jazz hands I game. I flip my Kinect the bird quite a lot and it never seems to register. Now you guys might remember the big stinky Microsoft document that leaked a while back that promised stuff like uh, stereo imaging and like four player connect support and better voice recognition and like super cool Johnny mnemonic x-ray crazy goggles that let you see ghosts and invisible people as well as what tell what kind of underpants the ghosts had on. Well that all seems to be accurate I guess because the Kinect has rainbow lava. Hmm. That's the news about the Xbox 720, everybody. Thanks for clicking on our video. Your <laughs> Ghost turn, Tara. underwear. Thank you, Max. Uh, moving on. Uh, a couple Fridays ago, we showed you guys a video of some of Dishonored's daring escapes. And now we've got another one showing three of the game's creative kill recipes. So let's do this. Oh my. First up is Death by Rat. So in this one, you start off with some devouring swarm ability as your base. That's gonna summon a pack of rats for you. Then you just throw in some bend time, which slows down time. Add a hint of spring razor on top of one of the rats. That's a deadly spike track. And then once you're done with that, all you do is just possess your newly created weaponized rat, scurry on over to the guards. Get in the rat, Tara. And watch them erupt in a flurry of bloody spikes and fire. It's really quite that's something. Like, that's yeah. not only mean to animals, it's mean to people. Mm -hmm. And it's super gross. No, it's nice to the animals. Oh, that's cause, terrible. Because they get their thirst for blood quenched. Next up is Friendly Fire. This one starts with you revealing yourself to a guard. Not like that, Ooh. Max, I know what you're thinking. 
just enough to get him to fire a bullet at you. Then right before he fires it, you bend time to slow down the bullet, then simply possess the guard who fired at you, move them in front of the bullet that they just fired, and voila! You get to exit possession, he shoots himself in the groin, everyone wins, except the groin. The groin is dead. That wasn't a groin. What was, was it? It was a head that they shot in the head. I wish you could just reveal yourself to guards. <laughs> Last I say, constable, take a gander! You just made me spit over. Last but not least is the reversal of fortune death. Now, this is an interesting one. These guards over here seem to be getting a little too much pleasure out of hurting innocent baby animals, so we're gonna give them a taste of their own medicine. All we have to do is grab this rewiring tool right here, reverse the polarity of the gate, and bam! The guards get wind blasted into extinction. I get to go home with cute furry animals. Again, everyone wins. Win win all around. You could also use possession in this scenario and just walk them right into the gate. Not the most elegant solution, but effective nonetheless. So, of course, this is just a small sampling of all the creative kills that they show off in this trailer. Uh, we don't have time to go over them all, so why don't we just show the rest of them sped up to 500%? That sounds super fun. Aw, look at those rats. <laughs> Spreading filth and disease. Oh boy. I gotta say, if, if this game had like more of a Benny Hill vibe to it, I'd be even more excited. Mm -hmm. that, that, that works. I like the one well. where things went really fast. What'd you like? You're truly a connoisseur of comedy, Tara. Thank you. Let look us know in the comments which one you liked. Tell Seriously. us, please vote for your favorite creative kill. Okay, so um, moving on to, to less violence and more sex. This week saw the release of a new trailer for Dead or Alive 5, and if you're into DOA, it'll get you pumped for the... Breast pumped! hey -o! Oh, Sorry, God. I won't do that again. Yeah, so um, much like every other fighting game ever, Dead or Alive 5 focuses on a tournament being held for people to fight in it, and the new trailer establishes that, as well as reaffirming the obvious that DOA 5 is gonna be about the boobs and the karate. That's a thing. We also get a glimpse of Virtua Fighter characters Akira and Sarah, and that's cool and everything. But speaking of the breasts, if you didn't hear, the limited edition GameStop exclusive collector's edition fancy special whatever thing of Dead or Alive 5 will include bonus swimsuit DLC. And as a serious video game journalist, I have only one course of action here. Bikini Fashion Show! Oh dear God. Why? Oh say can you see Tina's fabulous star-spangled bikini, a must-have for any 4th of July barbecue or monster truck rally. Meanwhile, Ayane gives a whole new meaning to going commando with this adorable camo two-piece. Look at Christy in this sensational snake skin. Ten points for Slytherin. That swimsuit does not fit her. Kasumi, what are you doing, girl? Standing there on one leg like a flamingo? Is that bikini naturally pink or is it just caused by the pigment found in the crustaceans and algae that it eats? That was a flamingo joke. Finally, here's Leif. What are you doing on the floor? Did you fall over? Did you fall over? Get up, woman! You are a mess! God. This bikini fashion show is over! You have ruined everything, you drunk! What a drunk. God. She was drunk? Anyway, um, if you guys want to get the swimsuits, you got to shell out an extra 20 bucks for the collector's edition, which also includes uh, a soundtrack and a hardcover book, which presumably also have swimsuits involved in them somehow. Dead or Alive 5 is dropping on September 25th stateside and the 28th in Europe. Dear Lord, I love my job sometimes. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I'm really sick of hearing about Dead or Alive 5, I gotta say. We never talk about you it. You need to get your mind out of the gutter, Max, and into the clouds. That was my transition to Bioshock Infinite. You see what I did there? Uh, the clouds, uh, there's clouds. I'll there. be over here if you need me. So it's been a while since we reported on Bioshock Infinite or really even heard anything at all, but now it's back in the headlines and sadly not for the best reasons. Almost immediately after Wednesday's show went up, the game's director, Ken Levine, tweeted, quote, Scott Sinclair, art director of Bio One, back in the art director's chair for Infinite to bring it home. Can't wait to show you what's cooking. So obviously that tweet took a lot of people by surprise. Uh, Nate Wells is the former art director. He's been with Irrational for several years, and it's usually not a good sign when people leave companies near the end of a game's development cycle, and that goes doubly so for roles as big as art director. So... 
A few hours after that tweet, Kotaku published a report saying that Wells was just one of the many key developers who had left the project mid-cycle. When asked for a comment, Levine dismissed the notion that the departures were a result of the project's status, saying, quote, in a company of 200 people, you're going to have turnover. After 13 years, he's sort of finished his work on Bioshock Infinite, as you will be able to tell when you see the game again. Daddy will be home soon. He just went out to get a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Daddy's never coming home. So Scott Sinclair is not the only new addition to the team. Uh, Rod Ferguson, who you might know as the former director of production at, at Epic Games, has also confirmed via Twitter that he's going to be joining the team at Irrational, though he might want to consider a new Twitter handle. Mm, I don't Gears, know. Gears, Gears Viking. Viking has to be the right fair, there are some it. Gears in Bioshock. That's true. There's probably the, Vikings in an upcoming game, too. I could see them going probably. somewhere with that. Of course, names and job descriptions are hardly enthralling news, so here's what this means for you guys. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready, Max? Multiplayer has been cut from Bioshock Infinite. Oh, I know, Lord. I know, I know. Hold your tears. Apparently the team was trying to fit both a Spec Ops co-op mode and a tower defense mode into the game. They just couldn't manage to make it work. And before you get all judgmental on me, internet, because I know that you like to do that, the tower defense mode actually sounded kind of cool and weird. You get shrunk down into an old timey arcade machine and then you just fight waves of enemies rolling out on tracks. It looked kind of neat. On the other hand, um, after Bioshock 2, I don't think anyone's gonna be particularly upset that Bioshock Infinite is single player only. What, regardless of whatever uh, cuts and personal changes they've made, though, along with the fact that no one has really seen the game in over a year, Levine remains surprisingly optimistic. He did say that the game is still on track for its February 2013 release date, and I'm pretty sure that Ken wouldn't lie to me. I mean, I did interview him that one time in a private room with, like, four other people, and he touched my hand when I shook his hand, so. I was just talking to he Ken. also looked into my uh, eyes. Back behind the cafeteria during lunch, and he said that he wants to ask you to the Harvest Barn dance. Really? No, not at all. I had a dress prepared. Oh, that's a pity. You will be a barn dress. wearing that barn dress. I got dress it from for Dress the, the, Barn. While your wedding cake rots like Mrs. Havisham. Oh Let's thank God, our sponsor cry. before I make more Dickensian yes. references. As human beings who unfortunately don't run free and naked in nature with the wonderful animals, we are expected by society's dumb laws and customs to wear clothing. And since we're gonna wear clothing, it makes sense to wear clothing that isn't stupid and doesn't cost a lot of money. So we have Jack Threads. Jack Threads is a members only online shopping club for cool dudes that offers fancy, sexy premium retail brands at up to 80% off what they cost in stores with no annoying salespeople bothering you in these virtual stores. Besides me, I mean. That's what I'm doing right now, bothering you. You guys ask me where I get my clothes, and I get a lot of them on Jack Threads. I just bought this hilariously inappropriate shirt today that has a picture of a blurred out naked woman on it, and it says NSFW. And I will probably wear this around the house in order to bother my girlfriend. Uh, it was 12 bucks, which is which is pretty decent for a shirt with a naked lady on it. What um, is her hand covering? Her genitals. For the record, they do have normal stuff that isn't offensive and doesn't have naked ladies on. I also got this jacket there. Uh, normally, Jack Threads has a wait list to join, but if you guys watch our show, that means we love you and we want you guys to have cool naked lady shirts too. So head to jackthreads.com slash destruct. You can sign up today for free right now. It helps fund the show. Again, that is jackthreads.com slash destruct. What they don't know is that there's actually a naked lady on the inside of your jacket. You just don't show anyone. I have a, I've it, seen you going into the bathroom I have at work. The Max, entire, I know what you're doing. That's really gross. I, my entire back is covered with a tattoo of the front of a naked woman. Oh, that's nice. So that no one can sneak up on me. Oh. Isn't that creepy? Okay, so we're back. Uh, we have some serious breaking news. Some serious, I know we, we joke around a lot, but um, Rovio has unveiled a new Angry Bird. How, its how name, am I not reporting Its on name this? is Pink, and it has the ability to blow adorable bubbles. And I don't think I'm alone here when I say that this new Angry Bird is just shamelessly targeting children and casual gamers. It is like Rovio doesn't even care about the hardcore crowd at all. They sick of me. Anyway, the shameless girly bird pandering is going to be added to the game's uh, upcoming seasons patch for Angry Birds. It's called Angry Birds, Rovio, not casual birds. Anyway, um, if you guys have been living in a cave on the moon with your fingers in your ears and no cell phone reception, you might be unaware that the next week is seeing the release of two rather large games. There's Darksiders 2, which Tara is going to be reviewing because I've been openly making fun of it on Twitter a lot. 
Uh, and I also told THQ's PR guy that the whole game looks like a disturbed album cover or an angry teenager's shirt. That's not true. Probably. Of course, that leaves me to review Sleeping Dogs. And while I can't tell you anything about it because top secret reasons, uh, I can tell you that the launch trailer is really badass. Um, normally launch trailers are like unnecessary recuts of footage that we've already seen and it doesn't really matter because you're going to play the game in a week anyway. But in this case, uh, Sleeping Dogs just, it kind of looks like a movie trailer, which is cool because I like some movies. Um, Sleeping Dogs actually borrows a lot from Hong Kong action cinema and the overall kind of undercover cop premise is ripped straight out of uh, Infernal Affairs, which you might know for its Hong Kong version or for the American remake, The Departed. Um, but anyway, the launch trailer's badass and if you think, um, if you don't think it looks a little bit cool, I have bad news, <coughs> you're a sissy dork. That's that's a, that's a thing. Anyway, um, yesterday we actually had the senior producer of Sleeping Dogs, Jeff O'Connell, in the office, and he was cool enough to hang out with us and listen to us talk about things. Um, I did an interview that's going to be going up on this channel on Monday, but in the meantime, go check out the walkthrough that he did with Anthony. Uh, they hung out and sat uh, next to my desk. They had to move my chair, which was bothersome. But it's just them playing the game for like 15 minutes, um, you know, real, real actual, real-time gameplay. Uh, and Anthony asked some stupid questions, and that is over on our Rev3 Games channel, which is youtube.com slash rev3games. Look at Anthony. Got a haircut. Just he looks so pretty. Sitting there, looking like a nerd. All right, it's not time to wrap this thing up yet. There's still some more video games to talk about, so we're going to do some quick hits for you guys boom, just boom, to boom. wrap it all up. First up, you guys know how Assassin's Creed 3 is coming out on October 30th? Well, you're wrong, at least for PC. The PC release date has officially been set for November 20th, a full three weeks after the console release date, and if that pisses you off, well, at least you won't be waiting a decade for the Wii U version. That's my professional guesstimate on when the Wii U will be launching. Right, next, 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 Next gen. up, hell yeah, hell yeah, the awesome looking downloadable game where you play as a satanic bunny seeking revenge for a leaked sex tape. I know we've talked about this on the show before. It's gotten an official release date and price. You can expect to see that on PSN on September 20th, 25th, sorry, and uh, XBLA the day after. Both are gonna be priced at 15 bucks. Finally, Jet Set Radio also got a release date and price this week. That'll be out on 360 and PC September 19th, and PlayStation Plus members will actually get it a week earlier on September 12th. Sadly, it will not be hitting the Vita until October 16th, but on the bright side, it will be 10 bucks on all platforms, which is a deal, I'd hmm. say. Anything else you want to add? Before? I was I was gonna say it's funny that Vita games getting released later than regular games. I've just convinced myself that the Vita hasn't come out yet. Really? This it's a great strategy. If you have a Vita and you're like mad because you know you don't have any games for it, just convince yourself that it's not out yet. But and, then you can never play it. Right, but it's not out yet. So you just convince yourself that you have an early copy of the Vita, and that's why you're waiting for games because it. There are some flaws with this plan, and I'll explain. Sound shapes did later. just come out. Sound shapes is pretty cool. Oh, I've, I've heard that. that's awesome. Yeah. I've heard sound shapes. It's like is if really you like cool. sounds and shapes, love them. Then you're gonna love this game. Love them. Uh, we got a few questions from the from the audience. Somebody um, said disturbed is awesome in the chat, and somebody asked yeah. my number. I'll just put my personal number in the chat right here for you guys. Cool. Six. Six. Uh, let's see. Captain Kenneth X says, "You can. You should feel this one. It's at the bottom uh -oh. there." Uh, Tara, tell Max I think he's pretty. Did you just have me say that so you could pretend it was me saying that? Yeah. That's weird. To make them jealous. Um, a game, a game non 54 asks, are you happy with all these games coming out with multiplayer? I never play multiplayer in yeah. games. Like, hardly ever. Nope. So, I no, I really don't care at all. Yeah, I, I really, I don't get into multiplayer so much. Um, somebody asked us if, if this is their first time watching this live. Do we ever screw up? Yes. All the fucking all time. We do. Don't say fuck. I know. I just screwed up right now. to watch our show about naked lady t-shirts and bikini um, swimsuits. One more question. Unemployed XXXX Jedi said, Hey Max, Sleeping Dogs or Saints Row 3? Which one do you like more? And I asked this because I actually asked Max the same question the other day. I can't answer that. Wait, really? You, you gotta wait until... Uh, you can't talk about your feelings about a game, even if they're general? I can't I can't make any recommendations. I'm embargoed until Tuesday. I believe my, my review will be going up right here on this channel. That's like Tuesday at like... 12.01 a.m. Precisely. Uh, Pacific time, I think? Uh, Pacific time, yeah. Mine yeah. will be up at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So yeah. Mine's watch out be for those on Rev3 Games. I'll say my review's going to be better. That's not embargoed. My review's going to be way better. My review's going to be way better. It's be so much better. Oh, my yeah. God. Already. I fight a guy in my review. You haven't even written yours I yet. I just go and I beat I already a guy. wrote mine. Yep. There's so, so many there's nude scenes in my review. Stop talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
You guys should go follow us on Twitter before we wrap this thing up. Uh, the show is on there, of course, at Detoid Show. I am also on there personally as Tara Longest. He is Max Scoville. He tweets a lot more than I do. It's true. I have like three Red Bulls, man. I was like excited Every about stuff. Every single day. I have a lot of stupid amounts of Red Bulls. Yeah. Energy drink company, his, sponsor his our show, please. desk is littered with cans. It's, I look like, it looks like Dennis Nedry's desk from <laughs> Jurassic Park. Anyway, All right. you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah. We'll try and catch that bird that stole our prize basket so we can have a contest next week. We'll be back here on Monday with lots of videos for you. We love you. Take it easy.